Hey guys, uh, Duke Nuka 3D here. I just want to do an announcement type of video. I was going to do a, uh, a uh, recorded audio video. I, was, I wasn't going to actually do an on-camera review. This, is, this isn't a review, this is an announcement, but I'm jumbling over my words, so I'm just going to cut to the chase. Yes, what Weapons and Stuff said is true. We are working together. We are trying to improve the community by settling aside our differences and determining what is the best to put forth in terms of knowledge and uh, content. And I'm. this isn't us going and kissing each other's feet. This isn't like a you're right, you're right, I'm wrong, I'm wrong sort of thing. We both had differences in the way we handled content and the way we handled our the community as a whole that sort of led to a lot of uh, discrepancies and misunderstandings between the uh, ways we handled the newer generations of the community. And so... Thanks largely on part to you slash Psycho Gopher and um, Chris uh, Chris's Militaria. I don't believe I got his channel name right, but I will link it anyways in the description um, for taking on a role of diplomacy for getting for talking to him and getting us together, uh, bringing our two Discord servers together under one sort of um, contingency demilitarized zone tier of a server that we were able to talk to each other and um, get things underway. Um, excuse me, scratching my head here. I need a haircut so badly. Um, so basically what this entails is that, again, there's really not much to say other than, um, we've discussed what we've, uh, basically just kind of talked over our misunderstandings and I've gone ahead and deleted all of my content that sort of takes the piss on his channel. And I've gone, I, if I find any comments that I've made that sort of, uh, uh, criticize him too harshly, I'll probably remove those. And he's pretty much done the same on his end. We've both put each other's channels and our uh, recommended channels uh, header off to the right-hand side of the, um, the the channel. I'm saying channel too much. Um, but you get the picture. We're both perfectly on good terms, and this sort of false um, sense of duality that the both of us are... That, that people seem to uphold of the two of us just simply doesn't exist. I never really had any harsh feelings against the guy. I had some uh, just misunderstand again, misunderstandings, and um, just I, I didn't particularly enjoy the certain ways that he did things, and so I kind of took it a little bit too far when those, uh, those um, flaws were sort of working their way to my doorstep, but he has particularly good reasons to do the way, do things the way, uh, do things the way he did them. Again, I'm, I'm not too good to be, I'm not in a good place to be doing this video because I, again, I wasn't in originally intending to do an audio review, but, um, this is sort of coming to this now. So, so basically where this all started, and again, this is pretty much where you would want to click off now. Everything's cool. We're, we've talked, we're all chill with each other, but if in case you want to know more about how this situation came to be is it's sort of, um, it sort of has to do with the collector generations. You see, back when the first gen collectors, or rather before, when, when gas mask collecting, before gas mask collecting was even a thing, um, what you basically had was you had a bunch of military collectors that sort of had gas masks in their collection, or you had sexual fetishist BDSM enthusiasts who obviously had more to do with gas masks than the military collectors, but also had, um, a, neither, both of them had about the same level of interest. Around the late 1990s, early 2000s, he started to see more people become specifically interested in gas masks as a main priority topic. And this led to many collectors such as Bart J. Wilkes of GasMasks.net. You have um, uh, Chris T. Carey, who wrote the book uh, Chemical and Biological Defense Respirators and Illustrated History. You have Johannes Muller, who created Gas Mask Lexicon. You have Peter Hermel, who's actually still a collector today, if I... If, uh, my research is calculated correctly. He's that one of making him one of the only active first gen collectors that runs a one of the old gen websites, uh, and many more. You get the point. So it was basically just a series of people talking in small groups and forums, and most of the world wasn't really open to the idea of gas mask collecting because at the time gas masks were sort of a uh, this idea that it was war, it was bad, it was a a bad thing to be interested in gas masks because it was a very bad image that they held. And as uh, post 9-11, more people were getting interested in gas masks and the knowledge sort of spread around a hell of a lot more. And this is what sort of led in, and as the internet advanced as well, it led into the second gen collectors. The second gen didn't really do much. Uh, the, the first gen, they were big in the fact that they were able to gather a great deal of knowledge on many masks, but they weren't able to properly compile it. They were able to make a few articles here and there, but they were still lacking in information because the there wasn't a lot of cross-referencing to be done. The internet was very inf in its infancy at that time. So the second gens really 
didn't do much to further that knowledge, but they did further the hobby. They made the platform, they, they brought the hobby across many platforms and got the word out there. And so after the second gens, you got what is now, we're in the third gen, which is basically um, people who have been exposed to gas masks through various forms of media, be it video games, movies, what have you. And they've gone ahead and joined in the hobby, not because they have a particular focus on a specific series or era or design influence of gas masks, but because they've seen one in a movie or a video game and they want to buy one, or they are interested in military generally and they just want a gas mask that they can use and LARP around with or even have some minor degree of protection. But, we'll, but that's a different story. So where this comes into play is you have a lot of people who don't really know much about gas masks because everyone and their mother can pick up uh, media, see a gas mask, and immediately glom onto the idea and want to get into the hobby. But they don't really know what it means to be a true collector, and so they just kind of want to join in to be into gas masks, I guess. It's not really as much as research and collecting all these rare masks. It's just as much just, you know, I want to buy one or two masks and be done with it. And that's fine. That's respectable, and I don't really have any problems with that. But it's just the problems that me and weapons and stuff had in the past is we always had opposing ideas on how we should handle these newer gens because... Many of them come with a very low budget, relatively, because they're mainly between the ages of, say, 12 and 16, maybe, as a gen generalized baseline. I don't know. But you get my idea, is that most of them are coming in with a very low budget, and they don't really know what to expect with this. And so, he has been good in the aspect that he is, because he has been on YouTube much longer, well, we both started YouTube around the same time, but because he was so consistent with his content and I had to nuke my channel three times over because I, I saw all my past videos as cringy and I had to rebuild and keep trying and find a pattern that I liked, um, he's been at it much longer and has a much more set presence in the community, or at least the YouTube community. And most people know it, know about weapons and stuff more than they know about me, obviously, just given the fact that I started very late, comparatively. Um, so... Basically what that means is he's immediately the one that they go to first. Obviously, I'm not faulting him for that because obviously he has, he's stuck with it longer. But um, his rhetoric for dealing with the newer gens is that he wants to pacify the one. Obviously, he wants everyone to be happy and everyone to be a happy camper with this hobby. And so he just kind of looks for ways to um, qualm their um, desire to use older Russian and Soviet era masks. And which is understandable. I can get behind wanting to keep the kiddos off your back, but at the same rate, me as a researcher who's um, dedicated to the physiological and mechanical principles of how a gas mask works and what makes a good mask and why some features on older masks aren't good and so on and so forth, um, it sort of irked me to get so many of these requests. Are Russian masks good? Are these filters safe? Can you use these filters with this mask? And it got so very tiring, and because people... The problem is people were coming to my channel expecting me to be weapons and stuff, I would have to assume. So that's really where all this began, I would have I would have to guess. And so now that we've talked that out, we kind of understand each other, where we came from, and we don't know what, I, at least I don't know what we're going to do to fix this. Uh, not that there's much to be fixed, it's just a matter of getting more information out. But the fact of the matter is, um, we're perfectly on good terms with each other, and we're definitely ready to start working uh, together to try and fix a lot of the... Uh, misunderstandings with the community because um, there's still a lot of um, very poor information out there. I, as much as I like to reference the first gen collectors databases, a lot of their information is by modern terms very obsolete and very uh, infallible. Well, not infallible, but uh, that's the wrong word. I'm trying to be so pseudo-intellectual I'm using the wrong words. So you get my point though. There's a lot of misinformation and it's very hard to get that good information out when you have this duality presence of, oh, this channel's better, this channel's better, and you want to, and these kiddos want to glom onto this one person and listen to them specifically when, we're trying not to start that. I'm sure he said that in his video too. I, I did watch his video. He did say that, I believe. Um, but we're trying to set the presence that we want you to educate yourselves. We don't want you to come to us asking us if we should buy this, you should know what to buy. You should know. You should look into what you think is best. Buy things for personal aesthetics. Just know what you're dealing with, I guess. And I, I guess that's kind of unfair to un to expect everyone to follow that pattern. But just as a general standpoint, um, there are a lot of affordable 40 millimeter masks out there. Um, but maybe they don't all fit your aesthetic. But I, but I'm getting ahead of myself. This is really not what I want to do to focus this topic. I just wanted to get it out there. We're on good terms. I've said that plenty of times by now. I'm sure you get the point. So that being said, there's really not much else I want to say about this, but I'm just very pleased that I don't have to 
uh, you know, say and criticize him anymore. I, I apologize, again, of deep, deepest apologies to weapons and stuff for any sort of flame wars I may have started or, you know, any banter I may have thrown at him in his videos. And I'm hoping that the both of us can get the community a little bit more centralized and eliminate most of the drama that's been happening and try to eliminate this whole personality figurehead ideology that a lot of the kiddos have with us. And the community is not about us. It's about you. It's about having a passion for something and becoming focused in that niche. And it, maybe you're not always that way. It can't always be that the solid definition of a collector because the gas mask collecting is a big melting pot of different ideologies and subcultures. So who am I to say who's the better version of a collector? It's, I, I'm obviously nowhere to judge, and I, I will admit that I'm kind of snobbish and egotistical, and I have this tendency to feel like I'm speaking for the first gens who have stepped down and allowed me to take their limelight, and that's not the case. I need to really work on that, so I will try and work on that in the future, and I deeply apologize for um, royally pissing a lot of people off, although there is a lot of people who deserved to be loyally pissed off. Uh, uh, but again, getting ahead of myself, that's really all I have to say. That's um, I might as well wrap it up here. So if you have any comments, questions, corrections, or concerns, hopefully related to the video, because I get a lot of you people asking unrelated questions to the video topic, but nevertheless, that's it. I'm Duke Nigga 3D, and I'll see you all later. How do you turn this damn thing off? Fuck.